with those cold, snowy days of January. This is what we wait for. The long three-day Canada Day weekend. There'll be fireworks down the street, at the pier, here in Brawny on July 1st, or maybe wherever you are on this national holiday. The preludes Linda shared some patriotic music, maybe bringing back memories to you as you heard that music being played. Well, back in 1967, for Canada's centennial, there was a man named Bobby Gimby. And he composed a song, Canada. It went one little, two little, three Canadians. Ring any bells? I searched out the original music video on YouTube. And as I looked at that very grainy video, I thought how much better what we do every Sunday in our virtual worship, in our midweek. Oh, how technology has changed. But the next thing I noticed in the video, and most importantly, were the kids in this Canada song. Bobby Gimby was going throughout the Montreal Expo 67 site. And what I struck me about those kids was how they were using their hands. They were always using them in such a way to inspire hope and love and confidence to reach out with excitement. They waved and they waved at everybody. They held hands. They made physical contact in this joyous hundred-year celebration. It seemed appropriate to think about that on July 1st weekend as we read the story that Evelyn shared, the simple act of a hand reaching out to touch a piece of fabric, a garment. This woman has been suffering a long time. And she came up to Jesus from behind and touched his cloak because she thought to herself, if only I can just touch his clothes, I will be healed. And immediately, her bleeding stopped. She felt in her whole body that she was finally freed from that suffering, that exhaustion. What a powerful story of faith, healing, and courage of this woman who we never find out her name. All she knew was that she believed that just a touch could heal. Dr. Sebastian Oaklenberry of the ha Hamburg School of Medicine in Germany writes, touch is one of the first senses that develop in humans. Long before children can talk, and understand language, their parents cradle them to make them feel better when they are stressed. This stress-relieving power of consensual touch persists through life for most of us. Before a stressful job interview or a test, a hug from a loved one can make a difference to calm us down. After a challenging day at work, a nice massage gives nice relaxation. The power of healing touch exists to this very day. And I don't know about you, but I found it was one of the hardest things we first lost with COVID. We stayed away. We stepped back. We didn't reach out. We didn't offer a hug. The Bible reading is actually about two healings. 
not just one. We ask, what does the healing of Jairus' daughter and the woman with the bleeding mean would put together like this? Uh, they were from opposite ends of the social pole, social classes, the dynamic of society. We see Jairus' daughter represents the very center of Jewish society, that he was one of the key leaders of the synagogue. And while this woman, who was hemorrhaging, was an outcast, literally beyond society, she represents those who were ritually, ritually and socially outcast. And we know many of the stories of the lepers in the Bible. So in these couple of dozen verses that were read today, we see a Jesus who is there for everyone. Whether you are the 1% or whether you're living rough under the Bronte Creek Bridge. Jesus is there for us. Now, we have many stories in Scripture that see Jesus being opposed by Jewish leadership, but that was not always the case. Uh, we think of Joseph of Arimathea, and he gave up his tomb, his new tomb, for Jesus after the crucifixion, a huge act of dedication and generosity. Now, we didn't know it was only going to be used for three days, but it was an incredible action. Jairus, Jairus is another good example of Jewish leadership coming to Jesus. And he's on the path to his home, and he's interrupted by a crowd. He's interrupted more specifically by this unnamed woman. It would seem that the gospel writer wants us to see the opposites in these two stories of the healing of two different women. It's often what the scholars describe in the Bible as a sandwich technique. It was used, often involving women, to point out an important truth. This woman uh, was determined, faithful, and she reminds me of the expression of our time. Nevertheless, she persisted, and she did. It's the expression of recent history when women have been silenced. This was a bold individual, and she approached a male she didn't know, and she did it without a male in her family or a male sponsor. She did it in light of her condition, which was considered impure. For she was cut off by the religious community because of this illness. And she wasn't financially stable. Yes, she was in a dis difficult situation, a desperate situation. And maybe she had no other act but to act in a daring manner. The point is she did it. She had suffered long. She had used up what little she had for medical care that didn't solve the problem. The unnamed woman has spoken through the centuries with just a touch not only touching him, but having that conviction that she would be healed. The woman felt it, but so did Jesus. Jesus said, who touched me? And Jesus could feel the power going out of her. Out of him, I should say, to her. This healing energy. And he was not willing to let it just be. He wanted to acknowledge it. I'm sure that there were many people in the crowd who touched him and jostled with him. But this one woman was important, and he mentioned it. 
On this Canada Day weekend, there is social division in our nation. We hear about women politicians who've been victims of so much abuse beyond the simple political differences. I reflect on this touch of Jesus' garment and lessons, for it might help in the healing of the divisions coast to coast. Could a simple touch help heal Canada's hurts and divisions? Maybe how we use our hands can change from hurt to healing. Instead of shaking our hands at one another and pointing and accusing and being vicious, if we could reach out with a simple touch. Instead of writing sexist, race, racial, or religious hurtful comments on public buildings, houses of worship, or on the streets of sidewalks, instead of using hands to type hateful, nasty things on social media, instead of people using one of the fingers of their hand up in the air or putting it in the back of their vehicle, Instead, let's go back to those kids and that grainy video of 1967, how their hands were open and welcoming and healing and greeting. On this weekend of Canada's 157th celebration of nationhood, let's reach out our hands with healing. Instead of the closed fist shaking in the air with hateful anger, how about reaching out? Now COVID is mostly behind us with a warm, healing handshake. The National Library of Medicine has an article. It talks about touch, especially in nursing care, but I think it's true in life. Touch is an essential human care need. Touch has been described as vital for growth and development. Those de deprived of touch fail to thrive. Touch is integral to the nursing practice, both in instrumental forms such as touching during procedures and nurturing forms like touching to communicate, support, connect, and show compassion. A considerable amount of research has been conducted on the benefits of touch. I think on Canada Day, we can really appreciate how the healing, opening, warm, embracing, bridge building of a human touch can bless our nation. Now, in this 2024 Canada message, I want to transition to an appreciation of this country. Uh, it sort of will be Thanksgiving on July 1st, if you will, but no pumpkin pie in Turkey. Lately, I've been using a new search engine, at least new to me, called Perplexity. And this is what I found when I asked, what are the blessings of Canada? Here is their Canada Day summary of the blessings of Canada, and I think it's worth us hearing on July 1st. Canada is a nation blessed with abundant natural resources, a diverse and multicultural society, and a high standard of living. Here are some of the key blessings Canada enjoys. Natural blessings, vast and beautiful landscapes, including mountains, forests, lakes, and coastlines. Rich natural resources like oil, gas, minerals, and fertile agricultural land. Abundant fresh water resources from lakes, rivers, and glaciers. Social and cultural blessings. A peaceful and stable democracy with strong institutions. A multicultural society that embraces diversity and immigration. 
high levels of personal freedom, human rights and gender equality, universal health care and a robust social safety net, the economic blessings, a prosperous and developed economy with high GDP per capita, low levels of poverty and income inequality compared to other nations, a strong educational system and skilled workforce. Fair, work fair, I thought that was rather well said by search engine. Yes, we have our challenges in the nation, but we are blessed. We take for granted, even maybe discount what we enjoy each day, especially compared to most of the world. So on this Canada Day weekend, a happy Canada Day.